Okay, so at this point, our add place activity is, uh, here's what's in on create in our add place activity. We're loading the layout from this, this layout file. Now what we're gonna talk about next is we're gonna, first we're gonna talk about how do we link the code here to the layout? Because for example, right now, the cancel button doesn't do anything. I can click on it and it just looks like it's broken, doesn't, doesn't react. And so the idea is the layout, we talked about this a little bit when we talked about the main activity layout, the layout defines how the app looks, but the behavior required to implement the layout lives in our activity.kt file, in this case, the um, add place activity.kt file. But we need a way to link the two together. And so to do that, I'm gonna to go, to show you how that's done, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna open up the add place, um, the add place, uh, I'll, uh, the add place layout file essentially. And I'll, I'll make the emulator smaller so we can see it a little bit better. So this is the design view, right? So this gives you a sense of what this is gonna look like on the screen, but I'm gonna go ahead and open up the code view. Now, there's really only three components in here. There's two buttons and there's this text field. And we use these other components. These are structural that, that essentially um, tell Android Studio how to lay out things on the screen. So this is why you know, the edit text thing is on top. And then there, the two buttons are side by side on the bottom. We're using these linear layouts to help organize the UI components with respect to each other. Um, okay, so I have a, a save button and a cancel button down here on the bottom. Now, what we're looking at here is how do we link the two? Um, and so you'll see that each one of these UI components that's defined in this file has an ID. And this one is description, and these are save button and cancel button. And this is what we're going to use to do this linkage. If I go back to my main activity, you'll notice that uh, I do the same thing. I use this find view by ID method, and I use it to get a reference to the map view, and then I have a way to programmatically work with it. I can tell it what to load, I can tell what tiles to use, whatever. What I can do with the different components depends on what kind of component it is. Um, but you would expect that a button can be clicked. So let's work on the cancel button. So our goal here is gonna be to have the cancel button take the user back to the main activity, back to that map view. So let's say I clicked on this by accident or I clicked on it, I did the long press and I got there and I decided, no, oh, I don't really wanna this isn't my favorite place. I started writing the description. I was like, this doesn't feel authentic. So I just want to go back. I want to cancel this. Um, so let's talk about how to, how to enable that. So I go over here to my layout. I'm going to look at that cancel button. I see that its ID is cancel button. So up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, cancel button is equal to find view by ID. Um, and I'll do r dot, r dot layout dot, sorry, r dot ID dot cancel button. Um, and I think, oh, you know what this wants? It wants me to give it a type. So this is gonna be a button. Um, and I need to import this. So find view by ID, let's see why, so you might be wondering like, why I didn't have to do that over here? I didn't pass a type parameter to find view by ID, but that's because this is a map view variable. So there's really two ways to do this. This is a case where I have to provide Kotlin with a little bit of a hint about what the type is. So I could have done this. I could have said button, uh, and then I wouldn't need to do this, right? So if I have a type on the left side, I could call 5 view by ID, but I think this is a little bit nicer, so I'll just keep the type on the right side. Um, so now cancel button is a, you'll see it's a type button. It's also uh, potentially null, that, that uh, exclamation point means that this is something that's coming from Java, right? So essentially Kotlin can't really tell if it's null or not or, or whether or not it's nullable. Um, in this case, the only way this would be null is if this ID, uh, this particular ID doesn't exist, but I know it does. So the next thing I'm going to do in my onCreate method is I'm going to attach an onClick listener. And this is an example of a place where I can use this nice uh, Lambda syntax in Kotlin because this is a method that accepts a um, interface that has a single method. So this is a, a method that takes um, a functional interface. And so in Kotlin, I can just provide this nice uh, Lambda sort of closure. And this code in here is what's going to run when the button is clicked. So to verify that, let's go back and, and let's revisit our logging approach. So I'm going to go and get the log tag from uh, main activity. I'm going to put it here, but I'm going to call this add place activity .class .job. So this essentially just has tag be add place activity. And it actually would be even a little bit 
faster just to use the string, but I don't know. This is kind of nice to know that it exists, that you can refer to classes and get their name in this way. So I'm going to do it now here as I'm going to do log. I have to import that dot D. I'll use tag and I'll say cancel button. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and, and rerun the app. Uh, when it runs, I'm going to open up a uh, log cat down here at the bottom. I'm going to look for uh, add place activity, which I don't see yet. But now let's go ahead and click the button. Well, let's go to the add place activity first. And now let's hit cancel, cancel, cancel. Cool. So now I'll see that, you know, remember when I was working with the search component on the uh, main activity, now I'm doing something similar with these buttons, which is that I, I have the button defined in the layout, which defines how the button looks. And then I have it linked back to some behaviors that are defined in my addPlaceActivity.kt file. So I use code to define the behavior. I use the layout to define how things look. And I use these IDs to link things back and forth. So the ID allows me to attach this particular event listener to that button in the UI. Um, okay. Now what I want to happen here, right? Right now is just logging, which is sort of useful. But what I want to happen is I want this to go back to the main activity. How did we do that? We've already got here, right? We got here in a particular way. We got to this activity uh, using this idea of an intent. And that's also how we're gonna get back to our main activity. That's how we transition uh, between activities in Android. So what we're gonna do is I'll say, I'll call this return to main is equal to intent. I pass the current, and I need to import this. I pass the current context and then main activity, and I use this syntax to, to, get a, to get a reference to that class. So this is gonna take me back to the main activity. And now in my cancel button, instead of logging, I'll do start activity and I pass this intent. Pretty cool, let's see if it works. So I'll rerun my app, and I will long press. I have a cancel button, now I click, and it goes back, cool. Now, the only thing I'm going to improve a little bit here, because I'm sort of a, uh, somewhat of a born perfectionist, is that I want to show you something that, that might strike you as odd. So what happens if I hit the back button here? It actually goes back to this add place dialog, or add favorite place dialog. I don't like this. This is weird. I think users would find this confusing. Because they went there, they cancel, and then they go back to the main activity, but if they hit back, they're like back into adding to some spot on the map that they didn't just click on. So I think that's strange. I wanna remove this behavior, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. This is actually not something that's tested by our test suite, but I think it's just nice to have because otherwise it doesn't make very much sense and it's unintuitive. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take our, um, and we're gonna say, let's see, this is called uh, flags. And we're gonna set the flags on this intent to a, a few flags, and you could sort of Google how to do this, um, but we're gonna set it to, uh, this is called clear task, and if you see the description, it essentially says that when you use this, the activity that you start becomes the root of sort of the activity tree, and so if you, you can't go back from it. So essentially like this will kind of clear the history of how we got here, which will prevent the back button from taking us to this, back to this add favorite place activity in the future. But we also have to use it with flag activity new task. And so this is like, oops, uh, this is like the one, one place in this course where we're gonna use uh, a bitwise, or I think we're gonna use a bitwise, let's see here. Um, uh, intent dot flag activity new task, I think. Oh, it doesn't like this very much. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Um, Maybe if I do plus intent dot flag activity new task. Uh, okay, so I think I think adding will also work here. Uh, these these are these are bit fields essentially. It's sort of silly. Um, okay, but this essentially sets. This is now telling Android when you process this intent, use this particular behavior. All right, so let's try this. I'm going to restart it. Uh, now, what am I expecting here? What am I testing? I'm going to click on the map. I expect this to start here. I'm going to hit cancel. And now if I go back, it goes back to out of the activity, which is what the back button would do normally if you launched it from that screen. This activity is still running. I can still, I think, I can still go back to it, right? Um, but the back button works in the way that we expect. It doesn't take us back to that add uh, favorite places activity. 
Cool. Okay, so this is where we're going to stop um, for this walkthrough. And what we've talked about is essentially the basic building block of how to use layouts in your Android activities. You define the layout, you do your work in the layout designer, you assign IDs to the elements that you need to attach behaviors to, and then you use this activity.kt file to define the behaviors for your app. And those can be sort of arbitrarily complicated. This particular activity is gonna be relatively simple. We're actually not that far from being done with it. But what we'll do in the next walkthrough is we'll talk about what you need to do next. And we are gonna leave you with a little bit to do here, We're just gonna acquire potentially a little searching around and a little bit looking at, in certain places in your own code base. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to wrap up MP2, um, but what we'll do next is just outline what needs to happen for you to finish uh, this checkpoint.